jury has convicted a 23-year-old woman of killing her own mother. A Summit County jury found Sidney Powell guilty of murder, felonious assault, and tampering with evidence. Back in 2020, she hit her 50-year-old mother in the head with an iron skillet before stabbing her nearly 30 times in the neck. Powell will be sentenced later this month. This video contains the interview of a college student whose friend murdered her own mother. The transition from high school to college can be difficult. There are higher expectations, new experiences, and heightened anxieties. For Sidney Powell, who had yet to settle on a career fully, this was especially true. Powell had excellent grades in high school and the support of her close-knit, loving family. She also suffered from anxiety, which was made worse by her consumption of alcohol. After several years of changing her major, Powell's grades began to slip. She spent more and more time in her room and missed classes. Her grades finally became so bad that the college intervened, telling her she could no longer attend. With shame and embarrassment, Powell returned home. Powell's mother, Brenda, had always been close with her daughter. The two never had any serious arguments and did not experience the friction that often occurs between mothers and daughters during the teen years. Shortly after her arrival, emergency workers were called to the Powell home, where they found Brenda barely clinging to life. Powell, who claimed to have no memory of that day, had struck her mother in the head with a cast iron skillet and stabbed her in the neck over 30 times. Okay, yeah, no problem. You, just, you sure you don't want anything to drink? Or? I'm good, I'm good. Hi, Hi, this is my partner. This is Detective Bertina King. I'm good, how are you? Look like I've seen you before, though. Me? You ever come here to see your dad? Uh, I did when you retired. Okay. I haven't been here often. <laughs> so, Lauren, first of all, thanks for coming in. Yeah. Um, we know that this is, uh, this whole thing is difficult for you, and you're trying to make sense of it, and so are we. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, it's, it, it, we're just, talking to you about what you know, not about what you've heard or anything. Okay. Um, just trying to find out as much as we can so we can, you know, kind of make sense of this ourselves. Um, so if you uh, if you want a, a break or anything, just let us know. But uh, why don't we start off with, uh, I mean, how, tell us about Sydney. How did you, uh, when did you first meet and how long have you known each other? I've known Sydney for six years. We met um, the first day of summer gym in high school, and then we were best friends ever since. Very close. And um, you, what, what are you, what are you now, what are you doing now? I'm at school. Okay, where do you go to school? At? I go to the University of Mount Union. Okay, and uh, what year are you in there? I'm a sophomore. Sophomore. Yeah. Now we understand that that Sydney was your roommate at Mount Union. Yes. She was for last year and then this year until she left. Okay. So how did that work? Did you, did you, I mean, did you both plan on going to Mount Union or? Okay. Yeah, she liked it first and I was like, I don't know. And then I visited there and I was like, oh yeah, this is the place to be. And then we both when we both got accepted, we were like, oh, we're definitely being roommates. Okay. And so you've been friends ever since your soft freshman year at St. B? Mm -hmm. And go over each other's houses, everything, everything like that. Yep. Curry had a close enough relationship with Powell that she should have good insight, not only into Powell herself, but also the dynamic between Powell and her mother. Okay. So, what are you studying at my union? Education. Education. Yeah. And what was what was Sydney taking? <sighs> well, she started off in exercise science freshman year, her first semester. But then she didn't like the classes, so she switched over to psychology and sociology. But then she didn't really like that. So this year she switched to education, and then she didn't like that either. And that's one of the reasons she left, is because she really couldn't find what she liked. So she was trying to figure it out. So tell us about uh, the, the the time you spent together at Mount Uni. You said that she, she really wasn't... Uh, couldn't find something that she was interested in. Um, like she, I think her most interest, I think, was psychology, like learning about that stuff. But other than just like hanging out with her friends, like educational wise, it was kind of hard for her. I think. Now did you? Where did you stay at there? Where do you stay at? Um, 
freshman year we were in a dorm room and then this year we were in a suite so it was like a dorm room but like two so we had like neighbors and we shared a bathroom but this is actually it's actually like mount union, union housing it's not like a separate apartment or anything. yeah it's yeah union. it's not union housing so it's just you and sydney mm -hmm. and um now were there some other groups of uh students that you hung around with frequently neighbors yours yeah so like i said our sweet mates which was Alyssa, who was a cheerleader with me and then my friend well our friend Brittany, who lives in like the townhouses so she didn't live with us but she was really close with us because she was in our sorority together and she was also a cheerleader now was sydney in that same sorority yes what sorority is that alpha chi omega now, do they have a separate house on campus there, or how does that work? So they do have a house on it, but they only have like one apartment, so you can't really like live there. So it's Alpha Chi Omega. Omega. Okay. Yeah. And did you both join together, or did you, how did that go? So we both went through recruitment together, and we both didn't know both at the same sorority. Um, what what attracted you to that sorority? Um. The girls, the vibe that they gave off, like everything that they stood for. And what was that? Tell us about that. Um, their philanth well, I think the girls are just really nice in general, but the philanthropy they stand for is um the domestic violence shelter lines and even though know, I've never been like in any of those like situations, I think that that was a good cause. Okay. Um so you didn't act, there's no actual house, but there's everybody just belonged to the sorority and just stayed at different part, different, uh, their dorms, is that? Yeah, yeah. How often did you get together with those girls? Um, every Sunday we have chapter, which mm -hmm. is like kind of like the meetings. And so and if we had events, we were with them. So anytime we had an event or on Sunday chapters, okay. so often. So when you first got to Mount Union, how, how was, uh, how did it go for Sydney? Was um, did she seem to be? I mean, you mentioned that she didn't really, you know, find a niche as far as what she wanted to study. But I mean, was she, did she ever talk to you about uh, her classes and how it's going, or did you share that with each other? Yeah, I mean, I think we talked about classes a lot because we did homework together a lot. Um, I think she was like, like I said, she. Sh I think she struggled in her classes. I don't think her grades were the best, but she didn't really tell me that because um, I wasn't really struggling, but I think you could tell kind of, especially at the end, that she just wasn't like doing her best. In, yeah, in high school, she was very like good grades and everything. So I think it was kind of a shock for her not to be like, sh like to struggle, I think, a little bit. I think it's like a steady habit thing. Cause you know, it's a big difference from college to... I think so, because mm -hmm. like, in high school, sometimes you can procrastinate a little bit, and in college, you definitely can. So she just wasn't, uh, you know, did it seem like, how did the, how did the, this, like, kind of change affect her? I mean, did it affect her moods at all? Did, did she seem concerned about it? Or tell us about that. Um, I think she kept a lot of stuff hidden, because when we were just talking or with our friends, she always seemed happy. Like, she seemed okay, like I said, I couldn't tell until the end where she was kind of just like struggling and she kind of was sad and just like, Lauren, I don't know what to do. I'm like, well, you just need to find what makes you happy. And like, just, you need to find what you like to do. And I don't know, I think it did make her a little upset because she was confused because she, I think she felt like everybody around her kind of had figured out what they wanted. That is a common feeling among college students who begin attending with no set goal as well as those who discover that the requirements for their chosen occupation aren't what they expected. So when do you think this, that it really started uh, affecting her? That, like, look, this is, you know, I'm really having problems and this is, I have to, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Tell us when you think that, that it really started affecting her, like, uh, often. Like her anxiety. Um, well, I know she's had anxiety for a while, but I don't think, I think those last, like this last semester, like starting coming back in January, is when it really started that she was kind of more like upset because she really didn't know what she wanted to do if she didn't like her classes. Because that's when she started the education classes. And like my friends and I were worried for her because we were just, we didn't know what was going on because she wouldn't tell us. And like there was problems with like 
housing or something. Just like we shared a room and had to put names on the doors and her name wasn't on it when we got back and we were confused about that. And she said it's because they messed up because she didn't sign the forms right or something, but it kind of never got fixed. And then she left. And my friends and I were just worried because we didn't even know if she got any books for her classes. Like we were trying to ask her questions like that. And like she's like, no, I have books and I have stuff for my classes. But like I do homework all the time and I don't think I saw her doing a lot of homework the last couple of weeks. So I think this last semester, this January part when she was there kind of affected her most. So had you uh, hung out over the Christmas break? Hmm? Okay. Yeah. And was she talking about what was she talking about then? Was she talking about the next semester or did you guys talk about school at all? I don't think we talked about school. Maybe living situations, because for like junior year, we were talking about living in the townhouses and like what we were going to need. So I think we were talking about living situations, but like school wise and class wise, I don't think so much. So when you came back from Christmas break, you didn't see her name on the door. Yeah. And when did she come back? She came back the same day. Same day? Yeah. Did you come together? No. Okay. No, she came in her own car. And so take us through again. Her name wasn't on the door. Yeah. And how did so I guess the door people do that? Yeah, so the RAs do that. Okay. So we were like, oh, what happened? Like, maybe you should go ask the RA because people were asking her, why is her name on the door? I'm like, I don't know. So she was kind of hesitant to ask the RA. So that's when we were kind of just like, what's going on? Like, my sweet mate, Alyssa, and I were asking, like, oh, what's going on? And Sydney just said that when she signed out the forms wrong. So she was meeting with residents like a lot in the last couple of weeks to kind of figure out like to get her stuff back because then her, when her name was on the door, her dorm key, like the thing we get into the dorm building, it stopped working. And so, but then it started working again because like she went over to Res Life and they turned it back on. So I don't know what happened really, but that's all she said. So it wasn't, it, so when she got there, it didn't work, and then she went and talked to them. Yeah. And she, then the, so is this like, so the key is yeah. the outside door, and then you have to use one for the inside door? No, so there's a, yeah, well, kind of, there's a key card, mm -hmm. like our Mount Union ID, mm -hmm. and that's when you swipe in, so like you can get into the building. Okay. And then there's the actual key for the room. The swiper wasn't working, the key swiper wasn't working. Okay. So I think. She just told us that she didn't feel like the housing form out, like this, when we had to come back, we developed a form saying we're coming back, and she said she signed something off wrong. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what she told us. Howell was embarrassed by her situation and lied to her friends about what was happening. Right now, you can watch another incredibly intense case on my Patreon. Discover the disturbing story of the Ken and Barbie killers, a terrifying tale about a couple obsessed with violence. Dive into their dark journey as they become immersed in unimaginable horrors. Watch this shocking video, along with many others, at patreon.com slash stranger stories plus. And then she just, like I said, she met with friends like a lot, like a couple weeks trying to get them figured out so she could, because like, she was staying. And then she ultimately decided not to stay. And so she had to return her to key and stuff. So when when she got her stuff working again, um, how how was it like day to day? I mean, did, did I mean was she going leaving the dorm? Was she coming back? Yeah. Cause and what what were you thinking about that at that time? Um, I was confused because we're like we we've told each other everything for a long time, so I was confused in the sense I didn't know what was happening, and I was just like she, she could trust me, she could tell me if that something was wrong, I want to help her. <laughs> But she didn't really tell us um, anything. Like she didn't tell Alyssa anything either or Brittany. Um, she did go to class, so she was leaving the building. Mm -hmm. But usually her and I were together because our classes were similar. So we'd, we'd be coming back at the same time. But I've seen, I saw her use her key, but like I'd use my key too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we were together most of the time, coming back from classes and stuff. Do you have any of the same classes? Uh, we had the same class, but not at the same time. Did you actually know for sure she was actually physically in the classroom? 
cannot say it. Do you know that? She told us she was. And I mean, she was, like, we both had French class, and she was doing her French homework with me. So I knew she was doing stuff with the same class, but I don't know if she was going to class. Okay. Was there any, uh, like, you mentioned Alyssa and Brittany, um, any other, like, maybe the sorority sisters in any of her classes? Um, no, but she was also close to a girl named Audrey. Um, she was in our sorority, but she was also a cheerleader. A lot of her friends were my friends, because we I'm a cheerleader, mm-hmm. so she hung out with a lot of the people I hung out with. So you don't know if she was actually ever sitting in a seat in a classroom? I can't tell you that, no, because we had classes at the same time. And if we didn't have class at the same time, it was because I was in a class and she was in a study room because she didn't have class at that time. Uh, what was she doing? I mean, was she at the dorm room a lot? Or how, can you describe for us what, what, uh, what she was doing when you know, she was not in class? Or yeah. supposed to be in class? <laughs> when she wasn't in class, if she was waiting for me, she lay in the study room. So it looked like now you know, like rooms that you can study in. So she'd wait for me until I get out of class and then we'd go do stuff together. But if she not, she'd be in the dorm room in her bed on her laptop. Did you notice any, uh, you know, change in her mood? Was she talking about anything? Or? Like, um, I could tell she was getting more upset, like more sad. And I told her, I was like, I'm here. Like, you can tell me I'm here for you. If you need anything, I'm here. But she never really opened up until she was leaving and saying that she was struggling with school and that she wanted, she was kind of trying to figure out what was going on. And that's when I started to try to help her. And then she then ultimately decided to leave, which I thought would really be good for her just to get her mind off the rest of the semester and then come back and go to Akron or something the next like, following fall semester, kind of, hoping that would help her. So what was that like conversation, as opposed to when she left? Um, that conversation, maybe a week before she left, a week or so before, saying we were talking about it, we were just like, I was like, well, Sydney, I understand if you like to take classes or summer classes, if you want to come back to Mount, I'm all for it. Like we love you and we want you here, but like I understand if you go, like if you go home, like my friends and I talked about this without Cindy too, but if she goes home and she just needs to go to Akron just to be at home, just to be somewhere where she can maybe try to find a new work ethic and something that makes her want to go to class, we're all for it. And she like, she's like, I appreciate that. I really want to come back to Mount. That's like where all my friends are. That's where I want to learn, even if I'm a semester behind. That was kind of what she said. So when did she actually leave? Can you put a, 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 a day on that, that, something that reminds you of when she actually left? The Tuesday before the incident. The, the, the week before. The week before? Yeah, Is that the last time you actually actually saw her? I saw her the Monday before the incident. That, that week she came back to Mount to watch The Bachelor with me and my friends at my friend's townhouse. She came over. Did she stay where she was staying after she left? Or what did you believe? Where did you believe she was staying? She was, I thought she, she told us she was home. That she left, we went to, we watched The Bachelor and then she left to go back home. And she texted us when she came home. Like I made her made it home? Yeah, like she yeah. made it home. Okay. So you think that before this happened, she'd been at the house a week? Yeah. Okay. So she leaves about a week before the incident. Then mm-hmm. she, then you're thinking she's at home. Yeah. And then she came back to, no. to just that Monday. Yeah. Okay. So Lauren, let's 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 talk about this. Um, you know, you're her best friend, and I know this is difficult, but to tell us about her relationship with her parents. Um, she. Mm-hmm. Her and her parents had a really good relationship. Like, her mom and her were best friends, probably. Like, they did everything together. Like, one of the reasons she went home was to be with her mom. They were always close. She never said anything bad about her mom. She never ever talked about having an argument with her mom. Like, I can't recall every time she'd be going home, she'd be like, I can't wait to see my mom. Or when she goes home for weekends, she'd be like, 
oh, my mom wants me to come home so we can hang out and like, watch movies. And she liked, like, she loved being home. This was the consensus of everyone who knew the family. There was a close mother and daughter relationship, and Brenda Powell was not overbearing or demanding. And she had a good relationship with her dad, too. Like, uh, I know that her and her dad liked to watch, like, Star Wars together, and they, he always, like, cooked food at the house. Like, he liked cooking, and she'd always talk about how good his food was and what they'd get each other for Christmas and things about spring break. Like, she was, like, she loved being home like, with her family. So when she's talking to you about, um, you know, the problems she's having at school, uh, did she mention that she tried talking to her parents at all or that they, you know, they were going to have, uh, that they were involved in her future plans at all? Yeah, I know she definitely, especially when she left, she talked to her mom about leaving. They kind of made that decision together to leave Mount. Like, she told them that. She didn't tell them for a while, but I knew when everything kind of built up. She was telling them how she was struggling with school. And then when she left, I know that was a decision between like, her and her parents, kind of kind of mutual type of decision. Now, when you say that she told them and it was like a mutual decision, is that her telling you that? Mm -hmm. Is that her telling you that she... she? Yeah, she told me that she talked to her parents and they decided that it would be best for her to just finish, not finish the rest of the semester. So as far as you know, based on what Sydney was telling you, she was discussing this situation. I mean, did you think her parents knew based on what she told you? Yeah. Okay. But you never ever talked to the parents, all right? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't seen her parents in a while. Um, so, so you last saw her, which would have been like a week before the incident, and then did she, had she, removed all her things or what about did you get the impression that she was moving out at that point for good uh when she told me that tuesday morning she woke with we woke up and she was talking she's like i need to tell you something my family and i decided that it'd be better to like, take the semester rest of the semester off and i have to leave today and then she like packed up all of her stuff and kind of told all of her friends and then she left that tuesday with all of her stuff all of her bedding all of her clothes all of her items and that was a Tuesday before the incident happened? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then she drives up to see you the, mon the Monday night before? Yes. Okay. Yes. Did she say anything that day when you were watching The Bachelor? Or how, how did that, did you ask how she was doing? Or tell us about that. Yeah, we asked her she was doing and she said she was good. Like, she acted like what we would see as normal. Like, she was laughing, she was having fun. She said she got jobs because she worked at the Akron Arbor Ducks. Mm -hmm. She's worked there for a couple seasons, so she was going to go back there. And then she also said she was looking for another job and like everything was good and she was trying to figure out like her next year and all this stuff and she was going to talk to her parents about housing, trying to come back to Mount. That was her main thing. But she seemed fine. Like she seemed completely like, like I said, she was laughing and we were goofing off and doing girl stuff and everything like that. Um. When she's, uh, you know, once she got to my union or anytime Ashley, did uh, did Cindy ever drink alcohol at all, or she did? Mm -hmm. Okay, just kind of describe that for us. Uh, I mean, we've all been college age, so. And um, no, uh, I don't usually like drink a lot. And if I do, it's one. But her, she liked to drink. Um, there was an incident in the fall of our freshman year where she drank too much and she wasn't alcohol poisoned, but she did end up in the hospital. And her parents, her mom came and got her at like two in the morning, but she did end up in the hospital that day because she drank like mixed drinks and drank too much. But usually after that, her and I were together and if she did drink, I usually kind of like slowed her down after I knew kind of her limit because she's small. Mm -hmm. We kind of knew her limit, and, but she did drink. What the, I mean, what? What situation was that in? Was it like just like a party or something? Or uh, I was in the dorm room watching movies because I didn't want really to go out. So she went out with our other, some other her friends. I was really close with them. I was close with one of them, but not the rest. Powell's struggle with alcohol may have been the cause of her problem, but there is a possibility it was only a symptom of an underlying mental struggle. And they, I got a call around like 11 saying Cindy was at a party and she was throwing up and she just wasn't good and to come pick her up. So I kind of went and got her 
and then she wasn't feeling good and so I brought her back to the dorm and she wouldn't get out of the car and I had guys with me trying to help and then the RA came out and then the RA called campus security and the campus security called the ambulance and then she was taken to the hospital. Did she have any friends that like wasn't in your friend uh, circle there? Like she, friends that she had maybe made on her own that you're aware of? Not really, because usually she was either in the dorm or hanging out with us or sorority girls, but I knew all the sorority girls too that they were my friends. A lot of this, we had a lot of the same friends. So her circle of friends pretty much consisted of the sorority girls that you were in and some of the cheerleaders that she met through you. Yeah. Um, had you ever seen her taking any drugs or anything, or any medications for nothing, nothing at all? Yeah. Is there anything that, uh, anything that you know of that, um, you know, any, did you hear from anybody else that uh, she might have done that? Have you ever heard anything like that? No, I don't. Okay. So, what, what, what is your phone number? What phone number do you have, Lauren? You guys texted that? We did, yeah. Okay. Um, so you said you mentioned an Allison? Uh, Audrey. Oh, I'm sorry, Audrey. Do you know Audrey's phone number off the top of your head? No. How about Brittany? No. <laughs> I'd have to look at my phone. I know, you just probably see them in the contact room. Yeah. So did she, that after, um, you said after she left, she got all her stuff and left about a week before. What what kind of contact did you have with her during that week? Um, did you talk to her at all over the phone? Um, not really, because we kind of wanted to give her a week just to settle in with her house. We asked her how she was doing, and I called her. Very didn't I called her, but she didn't answer. She was in the shower, and then I texted her, and I was just making sure. I was like, oh, I just want to make sure you were okay, and then she we talked a little bit. And then she asked if she could come over that Monday for the bachelor. And I was like, oh, of course, like, we'd love to have you. Like, we want you here. And then she came over. And then she texts me, I'm home. And then we'll text like, videos to each other. So she sent me a video that night, too. And that was kind of like the last of it. What kind of video? Um, a TikTok video. Did, uh, does she have any boyfriends or any guy friends that she met at my union or well, back here? We were we hung out with fraternity guys and like she had the same guy friends I did. Um she did have a boyfriend from about like December before break until January when she came back I So it was all like a month or so? Yeah, yeah. yeah very Do you know his name? Dom. Dom Dominic. Zappa. Yeah. So what made it break up? Uh, he cheated on her on New Year's. Oh, kidding. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that'll make you happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they broke up. How did she find out that happened? Um, I had friends at the party that called me and told me, and then I told her. Okay. Yeah. If she were already in a fragile state, this would have been another devastating blow. So you had to break the news to her. Yep. <laughs> um, had she ever, you know, any, uh, you mentioned that she had the, the, the drinking episode. Any kind of like uh, breakdowns or anything? Or uh, you mentioned that, um, you know, she had a hard time finding out what she wanted to do, what she studied. But any like real bad episodes uh, that you can recall, anything like that? I mean, not bad, like I've seen her cry, but not over like me. I've seen her cry before over like just being stressed. I don't think she handled stress very well. So she cried over stuff sometimes when she got too stressed out. But other than that, not really. The worst, uh, I mean, how did you take the news about that one? I was, she, um, she was upset for like a while, but then she just kind of just like, you know, it was not meant to be, that's okay, and then she broke up with him. Where is she from? Uh, I think North of Hebrew area. Mm -hmm. And the words back and forth, she just kind of like dumped him on text messages? Yeah, she dumped him every time. She was like, I found out, 
and I she gave him a, a little bit to see if he'd tell her, and he never did. Mm-hmm. So she's like, I kind of don't like that you never told me, so I just think we should end things now, because it's not going to work out, basically, typically. Mm-hmm. So, Jake, you talked about her anxiety. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about that. Um, I think since high school, Sydney's been dealing with anxiety. Um, like I said, she doesn't deal with stress well, so if she gets in like if she's stressed about something, she kind of gets a little worked up over it. Um, she went through a period in high school in her junior year where she just was like almost social anxiety. Like she didn't like to like talk to people other than like our friend group or go out to like restaurants or stores and she wouldn't want to talk to cashiers and stuff like that. Um, we kind of helped her and pulled her out of it and we kind of, one of our, a girl, um, I think, well she went to the counselor, so like Sydney went to the counselor, kind of talked about it and it got better after that, like senior year she was more normal, like I should say, but I think junior year she definitely struggled with it. And then in, a high, in college, I think it got worse again just because like, because she didn't know what she wanted to do, and I don't think her grades to learn where she, what she wanted them to be. So, like, when she, like, was doing her grades and stuff, I think that kind of stressed her out, and that got her more upset when she couldn't figure out why she wasn't doing as well, I think. Do you think that she talked to any counselors up there? Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't think she talked to any counselors up now. Because you'd have to go to the health center, mm-hmm. and she's across campus, and she never went there. So when she's, uh, did, did she, you, you mentioned that she was having problems with her grades. Did she ever talk to you about the, you know, the university's feedback, like if she was on like probation or anything, or any official status that they changed with her? So you weren't aware of anything like that with her? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I know the reason I kind of found out is because in the sorority, I got an executive position, or, or I was in a position to where I knew she couldn't do something because her grades, so she was academically for her grades in the sorority. And when would that have been that was, semester-wise? That was last semester. I kind of found out about that because we have which, a thing called... Which would have been the fall, yeah. this past fall semester? We have a thing called Big Little where like w- the older girls get a new girl in the time with their mentors, and she wasn't able to get one, I guess, because of her grades. So that's kind of what I found out because I was in a minor position then where I helped pick the big littles. So I was like in a position I kind of found out because of that. And how did she react when, when she was, you know, when you talked to her about that? Um, or did you talk to her about it? I didn't bring it up until I was just like, hey, I know you can't get a little. And they said it's because you're academics. Is there anything you want to talk about? She's like, they just messed up my transcripts, like I didn't get as bad of grades. I'm like, I don't really think that happens. But yeah, that's what she told me that they messed up her transcript. But then she came and told me the truth a little bit later that she did have bad grades. Powell struggled to tell her closest friend the truth, only doing so once she had no choice. That being the case, Powell likely hid her situation from her parents. And is that like this little thing, is that like towards the beginning of the semester? Or More towards the middle. Towards, towards the middle of the end. And that's, she did finally come forward and say that, you know, she was, did she mention specifically what her grades were? Mm-hmm. Just said that she was having having some problems. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how do you find out that it was all bad? How do you find out about that? When it was, like, all the grades were pretty bad? Yeah. Um, I never really found out what they were exactly. I just, she told me that she was like, I kind of have bad grades. My friend Brittany kind of struggled with grades a little bit, so she's the first one who kind of noticed that she was Sydney struggling because she had been in Sydney's position before, like her freshman and sophomore year, a little bit. So she kind of could tell, and she's the one who kind of like warned about to talk to her about it, like just make sure she's okay. Because like a probation thing, Right, it kind of, and then do they ever just like, did you ever just know that she wasn't supposed to be here? Okay. I never knew that. I think maybe, till the, maybe at the end she wasn't supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. That's what it kind of felt like, but I never knew. 
Okay. Because their name never appeared in the door, no. right? Did you ever, was there any RAs that ever came and physically checked your suite there? See if she was staying there? Um, after she left. That, after she left. Mm -hmm. But before that, they came to talk to her. Mm -hmm. So who's they, who you see? The RA, our RA. Mm -hmm. She came and talked to her, and then Red Light was also coming and talking to her. They come and asked for her, and she talked to them. Do you know how, 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 how many days before she left with that banner? Was it weeks or days? It was weeks, like throughout the weeks that she was there, kind of on and off. Mm -hmm. And then that night that she saw her, did she make plans like to see you again? Mm -hmm. We were gonna hang out. We were gonna try to hang out again soon, like over a weekend or something, but not like official or not specific plans, I guess. Okay. You don't come home on um, weekends all the time. I come home sometimes, but not often. But I knew because spring break was coming up, I was going to Florida, so I, we were making plans probably to see each other after okay. spring break. So, like back here in Akron, was there anybody that like you went to school with, or she at St. B, or really good friends with, um, that that you she would spend time with when she was back home? Who would have been? Who would have been? If she would have. It would have been either a kid who goes to Akron, his name's Lewis, but mm -hmm. I don't think she ever contacted mm -hmm. him because she didn't. He didn't even know she left until I told him. So I don't know if she ever contacted him. And then um, we had another friend who goes to Kent. Her name's Emma, and I don't think I don't know if she contacted her either. What's, what's Emma's last name? White. Did she go to St. Pete? She did. So what about social media and stuff like that? Any social media she had? She had Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. So does any of that look, did any of that ever look weird, dark, anything to you? She never posted anything, so okay. not really, no. Okay. Any, uh, any guy friends that were back here in Akron that she went out with? Mm -hmm. Not really, no. When she was here, she usually was hanging out with her family. Like, her close friends were kind of the ones at school. What, uh, what's your relationship with the brother like? They had, a, I think, like a normal sibling relationship. Like, they love each other and they'll do anything for each other. But they also, you know, brother and sister argue mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I think it was pretty relatively normal. Like, she loved her brother. She told me that all the time. Like we talk about, like I talk about Stephen, she talked about Andrew. There was nothing about any of Powell's relationships to suggest she would ever resort to violence. There were no fights or outbursts of anger. Like, pretty normal. Like she liked to go to her brother's soccer games and his lacrosse games, she likes to board him anymore. Was she playing in any, like, um, intramural soccer up at Mount Eden or anything like that? Yeah. Was, was she playing any back here in Akron or anything like that? Mm -hmm. So Lauren, what, what, I mean, what haven't we asked you? Is there something that you think that uh, we need to know or something you think that we, we might think is important that uh, that's weighing on your mind? I don't think so. I think you guys have asked a lot of good questions. I, I think you've gotten a lot of, like, a lot of the main things, like, just definitely, she has had anxiety, I think, kind of big thing. I don't know. You know, she ever got, went to a doctor, got diagnosed for it or anything like that? I don't know. Did she call it, like, I guess I would say that's like, to me, like, a serious word to call, to call something. Anxiety? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess the society day and age words kind of get it. Right. That's why I was wondering, like, the sheriff said, you know, I went to a doctor and they said, you have anxiety, and then we just kind of carried it on like that. No, she never said anything about going to a doctor. I don't know if it was diagnosed or, but I knew, she, like, we would call it, like, anxiety, I guess, even if it's just a small term for it, mm -hmm. or a term we just used, because it's used a lot, just, she was stressed a lot, I guess you could say. Yeah. yeah. And then, when it all goes bad, all of this, so how do you find out something bad happened to her mom? Um, so I know that I got called into my coach's office mm -hmm. because the dean or, or somebody came in and I was called into my coach's office and they told me that um, something happened at the Powell residence 
but then and the new people were going to the hospital, but they just didn't know what happened. Mm-hmm. The dispute happened, and then I, my dad was coming to give me a suitcase, and so then my dad had to tell me. Oh, you guys were going to Florida? Next yeah. Day or that, yeah, because mm-hmm. I remember being here that day. It was like the next day or something? Two days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, no, it was the next day. It yeah. was the next day, yeah. It was, yeah. He kind of told me what happened. And mm-hmm. my mom passed away. So kind of oh. part of it. So how did you feel about that? What were you thinking? Um, I was shocked just because, like I said, Sydney and her mom were so close. And I kind of just was like, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I think I was shocked and confused for a lot of it. And then I kind of, when I was on vacation, kind of figured that this happened, that something happened with her mom and her. And I don't know what, but I'm going to check. I can't really help. Um, tell you guys what I know, I guess. I knew that I can't do anything other than just be there for Sydney. Did it shock you? Yeah, it, it, it shocked me. I kind of was just kind of, you know, like I was just like, no, kind of, like, maybe didn't believe it at first. I was like, no, Sydney and her mom, like, maybe something else happened, somebody else was there, but obviously. That wasn't the case. So I was just really shocked about it. Have you talked to anybody in her family since this time? Um, we talked to her dad, just like we sent flowers to the funeral, so he kind of thanked us mm-hmm. and just was making sure we were okay. Basically, he was just making sure we were okay. We were making sure that we said if they need anything, we would be there for them, kind of that type of situation. So, what about the other girls that are friends with Sydney? How they? Um, they're okay. I think giving that week of spring break kind of let everybody kind of digest what happened. Like we were all really upset that day or night. I know only I wasn't there on campus, but mm-hmm. the campus sent an email that Tuesday or that Wednesday. I wasn't there, but I heard everybody was talking about it, and it was kind of upsetting for some of the people that were her friends. Mm-hmm. They because they were just confused because so many people loved her. And Never would have saw this coming. Not at all. Never would have saw this coming. So it was just a big shock to everyone. But like I said, having that week and now, I think not being at school because of the coronavirus mm-hmm. has given everybody time just to like heal and kind of digest what happened and just what kind of feel like that. So has anybody said anything like, no. we got negative naysayers? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody say anything bad? Like, uh, news this would happen? She asking whatever, anything bad? Not to me. Okay. Everything that I've, like, people, my friends have texted me, and people in my sorority, and it's all been very positive to me. Mm-hmm. Um, during that week on spring break, I kind of turned off all my notifications for social media, so, okay. like, I didn't see anything. I didn't want to, kind of, type of thing, just to kind of heal and not, but, um, I, I know from my friend that people were saying mean things on her social media page, her Instagram, because it was public. My friend told me that. I didn't go read it. But Is it Sydney Powell? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I heard there was negative comments on her Instagram page about her. But I, like I said, I didn't read it. But everybody, everything I saw that people text me and stuff was just positive, saying that they're here for us and they love us. And did it. Kind of that type of situation. So you guys are like, so what are you doing now? Just online? Yeah, no, uh, online classes. Are you guys back now for spring break, technically? Or? So we had Monday and Tuesday off, and then yesterday started online classes, but I'm just living at home because they shut down our dorms. You can't live in the dorms anymore. Well, what, uh, just have a question. What, what did, uh, how did she usually, I know, like when you're at school, you get that card and everything, but um, did she pay for stuff with cash, or how, if, if it wasn't her like university card at the university facilities, if you went out, you know, to a restaurant or something, how would she normally pay? Um, if you know, um, you know, either cash or she had a debit card, or one of us would pay, and she'd like Venmo type. Mm-hmm. We she Venmo, we Venmo. That was kind of how it was. So either cash or her debit card. So she did have her individual debit card. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. Because most of the food is you guys eat. Um, off campus or you guys like a kitchen and you do stuff at home? Uh, so there's a cafeteria and then we have in our school a cafe, it's called the B&B, where you can use your dining dollars there. 
you need money, but if not, it was at a restaurant or at our friend's townhouse, which they had a full-size kitchen, so we cooked there. Okay. So how you feeling um, <laughs> Like, I, I'm okay now. I, the first couple days where I was kind of sad and just confused and shocked, but like I said, I kind of realized that the only thing I can do is kind of tell you guys what happened in my kind of like what I know about her and just know that I didn't know Sydney or knew Sydney how what she was and that's all I can do is just support her and try to help as much as I can and kind of that type of situation just I knew that there was nothing I could have done right now or that situation I wasn't there I don't know what happened so all I can do is just be there for people. Do you think we haven't asked you? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, Lauren, if you think of something, um, I'm going to give you my card. Your dad knows how to get a hold of us, but I'm going to give you my card. And if there's something that maybe you say, oh, I wish I would have told Detective King, Lieutenant Wittenatz, or anything at all, or um, or I should ask you, do you have any questions for us? Or, I know there's probably a million things, but, uh, um, okay, I'm going to give you my card. <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> um, and if you... Like I said, if you think of something or, you know, somebody says something and contacts you either through Instagram or whatever, says something that's really unusual, I don't know what that would be, but if, yeah. if there's something that sticks out to you or, you know, just get a hold of us, okay? I will. Or they can call us. So what are you studying? What, what, what are you studying? Education. Okay, so you're going to teach? Little and I bet you little bitty baby kids too, right? <laughs> now you coached. You were coaching in the in the fall or in the, it's back at St. B too, right? Yeah, I coach. I'm a the freshman cheer coach at St. B. So you had time to do that in addition to cheering at the, the football games and everything? Yeah, so I would go to class Monday through Wednesday and then Thursday I'd go back home and coach the football games. Wow. And then I'd cheer myself on Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, thank you for coming in. Thank okay, you. I'm gonna Walk you back down and uh, appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah. Go right here and then I'll take you down over here. Dad's hanging out, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Like I said, your dad knows how to get a hold of me. You've been there. Oh. Mm -hmm. No one suspected that Powell would ever do such a thing. There was no hint that something was deeply wrong. The lack of warning isn't conclusive but it supports the belief that Powell wasn't in her right mind. Although there was evidence to support temporary insanity, Sidney Powell was found guilty of first-degree murder. She was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 15 years. Thank you for watching. Check out my Patreon link in the description below and drop a like on this video. Also, don't forget to leave a comment. I'm always curious to read what you thought of the case.